Hello everyone, welcome to another build guide. I'm back from my vacation and here's Marrow Shards. Uh, we played this build for the Vision GL tournament. Marrow Shards is an ability that is extremely powerful, but it's extremely weird. A lot of people don't give it credit because it takes quite a few things to understand for it to work. But as you can see, this build can do an extreme amount of damage. You can see it there. If you do all your combo properly, you can see you can hit the dummy for, you know, 300k if you want. If you stack all your shreds and stuff, let's do it. You can see the 280 there. With better gear, you, you could be able... Uh, my, my guess is you can hit almost 500k with good gear. With all with tier 7s and all that. So how does this build work? We, we use Marrow Shards and Bone Splitters. So we aim for Marrow Shards at the feet and then the explosion backwards it's what does the damage we are targeting this explosion so we need to aim or or marrow shots whatever we want the cone to be so it's quite a bit of an active playstyle because this ability uh, requires a lot of apm a lot of aiming a lot of uh, paying attention but obviously uh in you, you get huge rewards you can see the damages are just Absolutely insane. It's a, it's a classic glitch setup with Dead Seal for damage, a Bone Curse for proccing Armor Shred, etc. Uh, Reaper for crit damage and an extra life, and Transplant for mobility and cast speed and uh, execute. And, and Marrow Shards is our main damage, obviously. As you can see, I have Aura of Decay active. Aura of Decay is healing us, and it's making uh, basically. Uh, the build more convenient to play, as well as making it more tanky against poisons, thanks to the Ore of Decay, uh, less less poison damage taken. Again, this is not necessary, but it makes the build more convenient, more uh, fluid to play, as you don't have to be waiting for Reaper every two monoliths. You don't need to do it, but if you want to do it, and you want to snapshot like I'm doing, which by the way is completely part of the game at the moment even though it should be fixed it should get fixed eventually at the moment it is part of the game so again i don't really like it but it is what it is you're gonna have a video at the end where you're gonna have a, a at the end of this video you're gonna have a little tutorial where i teach you how to set it up so if you want to learn that watch the video till the end because you will see how uh how everything works set uh that being said the let's watch the build in action this build is really weird the uh, skill tree is really weird there's a lot of things that depends on gear depends on progression so i highly recommend checking this build guide on its entirety i know that a lot of you click on this video you heard that i push 500 waves on it you go to the planner and then you actually don't understand anything so please watch the build guide before you come to my Twitch chat and you ask questions that are explained in the video. Kappa, you know. I'll go over it soon, but I just want you guys to see the build. You can see it there, we're aiming, right? The playstyle can be pretty fast just because we have double dashes. You know, with a bit of cooldown reduction on idols if you want it, you could go a bit faster for mapping. Uh, or damage is gonna be absolutely insane. You can see how or life still is so insane that we don't even need Reaper, and then we're just gonna do our single target here, which is just absolutely insane. We're keep in mind this is 400 corruption, and that's how the build plays. Again, I'm gonna probably upload an, uh, my push to wave 500 to win the tournament. So if you want to see the build properly played on a competitive environment, I would suggest you to check that video. Now let's explain the build. Let's talk about the basic setups for this build and the not so basic setups. I'm gonna deactivate Aura of the Cave to avoid the noise. You can see that if you didn't have Aura of the Cave and you just have Bone Course, your life goes down. But as soon as you life still, you can see as soon as Dead Seal goes off, or life is just gonna go back up, no problem. So you don't actually need it. You can see, you can as long as you're attacking. Uh, your life is always gonna be up. You can see my life is gonna go down on a dead seal But again, it's completely not needed uh, And you can just see that There's no issue, you know, we have our decay. Our life is gonna go down now And you know, just a couple auto attacks and 
So you, do, you don't need Aura of Decay, I'm doing it for convenience and for the poison damage reduction. So again, if they fix snapshotting, the build will still work. Now, finally, let's get into the build. I'm gonna start with the basics. Reaper form, okay? In this build, we are stacking intelligence, because intelligence gives us damage, and it also gives us necrotic resistance, poison resistance, and, in, and armor. So you're gonna see that right now, we are at uh, no poison resistance, no necro resistance, right? But because we have 74 intelligence, you should have 100 with good gear. When we actually activate uh, Reaper, you're going to see that our armor is going to go up and our resistances are going to go up. So while we are in Reaper, we basically have our necrotic or poison and our armor covered. If we com combine that with the dead seal armor, and the bone armor we can get to 54 armor which we actually it actually makes us really tanky as you can see you can scale this even more with gear obviously we're grabbing the the crit chance we're grabbing the attack speed because the more attack speed we have the better if you had an omnis which i would recommend for this build you would put this extra point here for extra mobility while doing monoliths okay or a transplant there is two ways to run this uh setup you can run it with the um, with the with my setup which is a defensive kind of like more passive setup that i use for arena uh, with this setup basically we always use transplant as a defensive kind of mechanism where we're gonna be transplanting out we're gonna leave a pool of blood that's gonna slow enemies and then we're gonna attack them as we move we're gonna get bone armor and you can see that if you time your transplants with your bone armors you can basically have perma uptime with bone armor as long as you time it you have to basically wait like a second and then you have it again which will give you armor and damage reduction remember uh, we are also using the execute for bosses and uh, the pools as i mentioned for slow detonations you know to apply armor shred etc very rarely with this build we're gonna be detonating in um to do damage so i think i think the extra explosions to dash in place are not really necessary but if you want it you know you could take points of bone armor and put them into the extra detonations if you wanted to go a bit more of a dps route with dead seal etc kind of like the mao mao route then bone course bone course again has different setups mine is pure utility uh recasting bone bone armor in case i'm not dashing because i'm saving it in case i'm in danger this can be handy when you're in arena dealing with density. Armor shred, so we boost the damage of our uh, marrow shards. The recast nodes, you know, so every, uh, well, if you know how this works, basically, once we cast this on the air, every time we, for the next four seconds, we will apply bone cores into the objective, which will apply mark of death, which makes us do basically 25% more damage to enemies. Uh, at the beginning, if your weapon doesn't have chill, I would recommend these points just uh, instead of the armor shred and the bone armor just because sometimes early on it's hard to get a good weapon that has the damage stats you want and chill chance, slow chance, etc. so this is a good way to get chill chance for the build if you don't have it again, the build works completely also damage wise without uh, bone uh, without uh, bone cores as you can see it's a bit le less armor shred so you might not pick as high but you can see the damage is similar so again if you are lazy and instead of snapshotting out of the cage you just want to run out of the cage on your bar you can do that so keep that in mind okay bon uh, bone course is kind of optional but again you will lose mark of that then we have dead seal that seal is pretty straightforward we go for the duration because the more duration the more haste we will get afterwards if we need to flee the more duration is the more uptime we're gonna have for our, our buff as you guys know, a dead seal gives a shit ton of damage in combination with uh, Reaper form that I will showcase in a second. We have all the armor that we mentioned previously that, that synergizes with our intelligence stacking and our armor stacking. We have the health reduction, so we make sure we benefit the maximum out of it and we kick the DR, uh, the damage reduction for being low life. You can see there, like, uh, uh, you take less damage equal to half of your percentage missing health. So if you're missing 75% of your health, you're going to have like around 30 something percent DR. And then we have the damn stacks per second. So, you know, the dead wave from uh, from dead seal, which is this thing that goes around you. 
uh, you know, in case there's some something that dashes at you or whatever. You know, this thing's this thing does quite a good quite good damage. So you have that uh, kind of like to protect your surroundings. As you can tell right now, or increase damage spell damage is 400, and if we use a uh, rip uh, reaper form, it's gonna be 500, and if we use dead seal, it's gonna be 1,000. So our increased damage is absolutely off the charts, and you can see, again, with good gear, you could hit the dummy for 500k easily. Uh, and then, the star of the show, Marrow Shards. So again, Marrow Shards has different ways to be built. I am building Bone Splitters. Bone Splitters is the cone, right, like I mentioned, that procs after your, bone, uh, your Marrow Shards travels. There is a lot of things that you need to learn about this uh, ability in order to understand this build, so I'm gonna explain some of them. This ability basically has a travel distance, right? And normally, if you don't have uh, distance idols, which I'm, I have at the moment, you can see this is pretty short. This is my normal travel distance with Marrow Shards. You can see, as far as I'm aiming, that's my range. Right? And obviously my bone splitters don't really reach that long. So this makes it a very close range kind of build. But what happens if I equip projectile speed, right? Idols in my gear. Let's see what happens. Look at my range now. So basically you build... Look at my range now. So basically the entire idea of this build is that you, you create this cone of destruction, whatever you're aiming, and you kind of play a leech that instead of going in, is always running away, and this is obviously super good because being range is really valuable in this game. So now that we understand that, and we understand why we're using bone splitters instead of marrow shards, and again, keep in mind, if you are close range and you're marrow sharding, you can see my damage is not that great, because I'm hitting with Marrow Shards. 48k only. You wanna hit with the Bone Splitters, that are doing almost double the damage, right? That's without any buff. So make sure you're always like aiming at your feet, you know? So the Bone Splitter is the thing that is actually hitting. Again, this build, because of things like this, is a bit more complicated than usual. So, uh, yeah. How do we use this ability? There are certain nodes that are mandatory, in my opinion. The, the, the big multipliers and the big behavioral changes. What, what are those? We want Apathy. Apathy gives us 25% more damage. And all we need is to put one point in Osumancy. The reason I don't put more points into Osumancy, because it's basically double damage, is because you double cast Marrow Shards, and Marrow Shards consumes at the moment is 10% of your HP, 9%, right? Plus 10%, right? So I'm basically consuming 30% of my HP every time I cast it, and I have a lot of cast pit. So if you double that with the recast, you might basically kill yourself. So be careful with this. If you have extra Marrow Shard points, they're recommended, but I think basically we grab one point to get to Apathy. We get one point to Bone Knives. What, does do what this does is that Marrow Shards doesn't pierce. Normally, when you use Marrow Shards like this, instead of collapsing, it would just keep going. But because we don't care about the Marrow Shards, we're going Bone Splitters, we can benefit from this amazing multiplier of 75. Okay? Uh, and without losing AoE, because the Bone Splitters still like will have AoE, even though the Marrow Shard doesn't pierce. Then we want the bone splitter, the, the bone splitter on hit because obviously bone splitter is or damage, and we want to uh, we want the targeted destruction of the projectile so we have full control or where or damage and how is being dealt max range short range etc. Right. Then we want to have the bone splitter damage. This is the entire node that makes the build possible, and I would recommend at least two bone splitter range and speed because it would make it have this like pretty decent size of a cone that basically covers, basically will kill an, an, an entire pack of mobs in the arena. Uh, that's why I think two points is enough. If you wanna experiment with more points and have more AoE, go for it. Okay, these are the basic points that I would 100% get. This point, this point, 
these points to get here, and the damage, and this point, this point. So we have remaining points. If you are not, uh, if you are not, uh, if you don't have good gear and good crit chance, I would recommend using these base crit chance points, even if it's only three. I think they're basically, you basically need them in order to reach 100% crit chance. So I highly recommend getting these points in order to level the build. For the same reason, we're gonna grab these points here because of the base crit chance. You know, between this 3% and this 6%, that's 9% base crit chance that we add into the build. But, okay, but. If, if we have good gear, this is a best in slot scenario. And you get 4% crit chance implicit on prismatic gaze. That means you don't need this crit chance anymore because you get it on prismatic gaze. And what you can do instead is you can sh you can shift points around, right? And get the bleed chance and the extra 100% multiplier. The damage you just seen in the dummy is missing this 100% multiplier. So again, right now, my the build is only doing a fraction of the damage it can do. Because we're actually missing a 100% multiplier that can actually be acquired. Again, being a physical spell, you can get up to 20, plus 26 thanks to Thornslinger, Omnis, and the tier 7 Marrow Shards. If you didn't have a tier 7 Marrow Shards, you just run the tree that I just showed you previously. But keep that in mind, there is a budget tree and there is a best in slot tree the build you saw in action is the budget tree but this is will be my goal other things about marrow shards marrow shards has 110 damage effectiveness from added damage which means flat damage is really good and it doesn't cost mana it costs hp right as we can see it has a zero mana cost because it costs hp guess what reaper form is also zero mana cost Bone Course has mana cost, but we don't cast it often. Transplant has no mana cost, and Dead, St Dead Seal has one mana cost. And for that reason, for this build, I am using a Gate Staff. Because we actually don't care about the uh, increased spell mana, uh, increased mana cost. Because again, we don't use any mana. So we can go full fucking damage, and we don't care about it. Uh, in this planner that would be included in the... In the in the build guide thingy uh, on YouTube. This is like best in slot, right? So the tier 7s is the thing you want to aim. The seals are tier 1 is what you want to aim to seal. And everything else are your other priorities, right? Again, this is absolutely best in slot. You could just, you know, turn everything yellow with no sealed. And it should be what you should aim for at the beginning, pretty much, okay? So don't, don't get intimidated by the planner, this is just so you guys have an idea that what is viable, what, what is uh, valuable, sorry, and what is not. Okay? I would also link like a, a planner with no uniques and just basic stuff so you can go and play the build yourself. How do we want to build uh, gear this build? Well, pretty easy. We got our resistances from different blessings combinations that you can see in the planner. I'm not going to get too much into it because you should already know this kind of stuff if you watch my Twitch. And if you don't, then you need to watch me. Uh, we're going to build HP, obviously, and then we're going to have a lot of armor. You can see that normally our armor doesn't look that good, as you can see, right? We only have a thousand armor, like the planner says. But, you know, when we activate the Reaper, we transplant and we go... Or that still we actually had 60% armor mitigation, which is pretty fucking massive. Alright. Other things for the build. Idols that we want. We want the projectile speed. We also want the chance to fear at least on one or of our idols. You can get it on the huge immortals. Or you can get it on the small ones, the large idols with HP. And other things we want to get is either flat HP with resistances that we might need for to fit our resistances. HP, HP, right? You can get HP idols and the increased spell physical crit chance. Increased spell physical crit chance is a really, 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 really good thing in case you are uh, going for budget gear. 
uh, you can see that even at tier one, uh, sp like spell uh, creatures, fizz, sorry, fizz, roll 76% increased crit. So again, if you have budget gear and you just have a chest piece with basic HP and stuff, slap a tier one of physical spell creatures early on can be really helpful. Again, legendaries that we might be looking for this build. Uh, again, Quicksilver Coil with 4 LP, 3 LP, just transfer your ring into it, you know, if, if you only have 2 LP, just give up on the prefixes, no problem. Thornslinger with just HP, 2 LP would be enough just to run it, um, I included the other stuff just in case you wonder what I would get myself. Prismatic Gaze, just with plus 4 Marrow Shards, I would say. If you don't have a plus 2, at least Marrow Shards, I would stay away from Prismatic Gaze and just use the old tree that I showed you. Omni is obviously really valuable for the plus skills and all the resistances, which Leech really wants. And, for example, you could run a Titan Heart, for example, you know. Titan Heart, really good with this build, because less damage taken when wielding a 200 melee weapon, which we are doing, because a staff is a 200 melee weapon. Um, we are, uh, and obviously the HP is obviously huge, and we don't care about the region. Because obviously we do not regen while in Reaper form, right? So again, you're gonna have this planner. Again, I'm gonna leave you guys with the tutorial on how to snapshot. And again, you're gonna have in the channel the full push at 500 waves. So you see this build in action. Me playing very focused and seeing the build at the absolute peak and seeing how it actually performs. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm glad to be back. I hope you guys didn't miss me too much because uh, I'm back and uh, yeah, hopefully 2022 makes us grow a lot and we make a lot of awesome builds. Thanks for watching and bye-bye. Uh, uh, Hello everyone. I'm gonna quickly explain how to properly snapshot Aura of the K for this build or any Leech build that you're gonna play. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna play, uh, you wanna go to Monolith and you want to find one of these uh, one of these rewards that are the the experience ones like tomes of experience and once you find it you do it right and then you would have these books if you grab one of those books you will get a lot of experience for your abilities and that 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 way you can respect really fast so one find one of these ones the more corruption you are the more you're going to fill up the bar and the fastest this process is going to be i'm at almost 400 corruption at the moment so this is going to be almost instant. So what you want to do for Aura of the K is you spec Aura of the K, you put it on your bar, you put all the points as I'm going to do here. You take the less damage taken, you take all the resistances, and you take the chill chance and the slow chance. Alright, now uh, we're going to be wearing gear that has HP and healing effectiveness. You can see healing effectiveness, healing effectiveness, healing effectiveness, healing effectiveness, healing effectiveness, healing effectiveness, healing effectiveness HP, healing effectiveness, right? We're going to activate Aura of Decay, and now Aura of Decay is going to heal us a lot. This way, we can offset our really, really big life drains of our passives. Then, we're going to put Bone Cores in. You can see Aura of Decay is still going on. We're going to unspec Aura of Decay. We're going to spec Bone Cores, which is the ability we actually want to use. We'll, we wanna spec, we're going to spec it like we like. We're going to grab the, the passive point, so we level it up. We're gonna put the remaining points and we're gonna re-equip our gear by taking off all of our healing effectiveness stuff. I recommend having a taps for this so the process gets fast. And you're good to go, you're snapshotted. 